So this is the painting of the foam latex mask of the Toxic Avenger. So the first thing you want to do is the highlights. This will actually make the mask look 3D and all those bumps and ridges will really pop. So what I did first was do yellow. This is another color of the green in the mask. So this was my first highlight. I went around any of the eyebrows, ridges, and then I also did some on the bumps as well. So there I'm doing the ear. And on the bumps, I also did red and a little bit. But right now, this is kind of just to make the skin look like it is starting to expand and become a little irritated. The red is the irritated. The yellow is sort of just the skin mutating. If you actually did the green first on this, it would then make the mask look very flat and one dimensional. And for this, I actually just used regular artist brushes. Please note the paint I'm using actually has glue in it. So do not use something that you love. And now I'm going over with the red. And this is just for all the basically the red uh, irritation on the bumps and any place I wanted to add a little extra red. And that's the brush I'm using. And for this, you'll, I'm also also taking note of the ridges that are around the bumps. And for any, painting any sort of foam latex project, you're not gonna want to use a regular acrylic or latex paint because for foam uh, latex, it actually acts a little bit more like skin than it does um, a regular sort of appliance, like a latex appliance. In this case, you wanna use what's called a Pax paint. Pax paint is essentially a latex or acrylic uh, it kind of depends on which school you go to, and it is 50% of a paint and 50% of Prozade. Prozade is a glue, much like your spirit gum. It's a lot better than spirit gum, and it's used to adhere appliances to skin. Uh, there's also veins on this mask, so I'm using a little bit thinner brush, and I'm going over all of the veins. So back to Pax Paint. You could actually buy it. I, for this project, I actually ended up using uh, my own homemade Pax Paint. I used an acrylic paint and then I used for 50% and then I used Prosade for 50%. Um, so I am trying to be pretty careful on this vein, but of note, just so you know, anytime you're doing any sort of grotesque or blood effects or anything like that, or scars, scratches, whatever, don't worry so much about the exact line, circle, prettiness of it. As you can see there on those bumps, I just took a brush and sort of brushed over it. Because again, this is highlight A, B, this is the grotesque. Um, and now we are moving on to the green paint. For the green paint, I actually did go out and buy uh, Pax paint because I knew I needed a lot of it and it wanted a very specific shade. And for this, you'll want a makeup sponge where you can buy at any sort of pharmacy. It's nothing fancy. The little plate I showed you, you can just use any sort of plate. You can use a plastic plate if you wanted to. That's just a metal plate I have to do other makeup and mix makeup as well. So for this, you're going to want to take the paint dip the makeup sponge into the paint and then brush some of it off because you don't want to have big globs of green paint everywhere. And you're just going to press it into the foam latex mask. You don't want to uh, use a brush in this initial stage because you're really trying to get that paint into the pores of the foam latex mask. Uh, one of the questions might be, why are we using this special paint? Why does it have glue in it? Blah, blah, blah. Well. Foam latex acts a lot differently, especially when you're using it in a mask. So you want to make sure and use a paint that actually does have a little bit of a glue in it or something a little bit more than latex as it's more pliable and it will actually move with the mask. If we painted this with just any other sort of paint, it would crack um, anytime that the actor tried to stretch it out to put it on, it would the paint would peel off or it would crack. So in this case, this actually gets this type of paint actually goes into the pores, and especially with the way you're pounding it in there, 
it goes to the pores of the um, of the mask and actually makes it so that it becomes one, if you will, with the mask. And yeah, so you're gonna do this all over the mask, all over your highlights. There I am putting a little more of the paint. Um, it's a pretty small bottle, and let me tell you, I only used a quarter of this paint, this PAX paint, on uh, this mask. Uh, this is also the same sort of paint that is used in Wicked or any of those other sort of shows where people need to be body painted and have the sort of look of a full coverage, actually skin looking type paint. So yeah, that's what I did so far. And you just do that for the whole mask. And now this is the mask all finished. So what I did here was I just took again, a brush into the actual pack screen paint and went back over any of the vast areas or like wide areas where the green looked a little more faded. Now you want the highlight, like I said, like you want that yellow, you want those reds to really make the mask pop and look three dimensional. But you don't want to have it look like there's basically imperfections in the mask. Now there were a couple of imperfections in the mask that were not unavoidable um, as I didn't actually make this mask, but the um, by painting it over and just sort of trying to get as much green over the surface area as possible and covering up any like massive highlights, anything that was really apparent that it was a highlight. Um, that's what you do with the brush. And also, yeah, again, what I'm doing there with that red. The last thing you do is you want to do a setting powder. And don't use a powder brush that you love because again, this paint is actually used with glue. And of course you wait till after it dries. So this is after Toxie has dried. I've done that whole layer over it. And um, once you're done, you powder them up. And then once you powder them up, you take a wet washcloth and wipe off all of the setting powder. You may need to go back over and do that again. In this case, I actually hadn't uh, taken that washcloth and gone over him. I basically just did this little video to show you this portion at, right after I powdered him. But after that, you may need to powder again, and then wet washcloth, and then powder him again, and so on and so forth. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope this was helpful. This is Stephanie Cox Connolly.